Bad Tier T4 Warriors coming at you with another video. Today we're going to be going over an article which I found that was really pertinent to um, everything that's kind of going on in um, the veterans world. Anything that goes on when it comes to depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and various illnesses. So there's a paper from the University of Austin, Texas, UT News. PTSD risk can be predicted by hormone levels prior to deployment, study says. New neuroscience research suggests some soldiers may have a hormonal predisposition to experience PTSD, which is a very interesting way of saying that. Austin, Texas, up to 20% of U.S. veterans who served in Iraq and Afghanistan developed symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder from trauma experienced during wartime, but new neuroscience research from the University of Texas at Austin suggests some soldiers may have a hormonal predisposition to experience stress-related disorders. Oh, really? It's almost like people have, like, cortisol or something. And testosterone. Cortisol, the stress hormone, is released as part of the body's flight or flight response to life-threatening emergencies. Someone researched in the 1980s conducted abnormal cortisol levels can to an increased risk for PTSD, but three decades of subsequent research produ produced a mixed bag of findings, dampening enthusiasm for the role of cortisol as a primary cause of PTSD. However, new findings published in the Journal of Psychoneuroendocrinology point to cortisol critical role in the emergence of PTSD, but only when levels of testosterone, one of the most important of the male sex hormones, are suppressed, researchers said. Recent evidence points to testosterone suppression of cortisol activity and vice versa. It is becoming clear many researchers, to many researchers that you can't understand the effects of one without simultaneously monitoring the activity of the other said UT Austin professor of psychology, Robert Josephs, the first author of the study. Prior attempts to link PTSD to cortisol may have failed because the powerful effect that testosterone has on hormonal regulation of stress was not taken into account. Mm, it's almost like somebody had a myopic view of something and um, decided to come to a conclusion that didn't meet the facts. Interesting how that works. In all while right now, you know, we have a um, a political climate in which uh, men are bad. Um, uh, critical race theory is very important, supposedly, but then we're destroying men as a whole. And if you try to get help as a man, you're laughed out of the room. Oh, it's just depression. Here's more lithium. Oh, we just didn't do enough lithium, so here's more. Oh, um, there's no such thing as hormones. Go to talk therapy and talk about your feelings. Yeah, that kind of nonsense. UT researchers use hormone data obtained from saliva samples of 120 U.S. soldiers for deployment and tracked their monthly combat experiences in Iraq, examine the effects of traumatic war stressors to PTSD symptoms over time. Before deployment, soldiers were administered a stress-stimulating CO2 inhalation challenge to examine their cortisol and testosterone reactivity to stress. Researchers found that soldiers who exhibited less change in both testosterone and cortisol levels in response to the challenge were more likely to later show PTSD symptoms in response to combat stress to Iraq. However, soldiers who showed an elevated testosterone or elevated cortisol response to the CO2 inhalation challenge were less likely to develop PTSD. The means through which the hormones contribute to the development of PTSD and other forms of stress-related mental illness are complex, said Adam Cobb, a UT Austin clinical psychology doctoral candidate and co-author of the study. Advancement in this area must involve examining how hormones function together with their psychobiological systems. S systems? in response to ever-changing environmental demands. <laughs> kind of like burn pits and getting shot at. Yeah, that kind of could affect things. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm getting shot at. Oh, oh no, here's more lithium. Um, 
N knowing this, the scientists suggested future research could investigate the efficacy of preventative interventions targeting those at-risk profiles of hormone stress activity. We are still analyzing more data from this project, which we hope will reveal additional insights into risk of combat related stress disorders and ultimately how to prevent them, said Michael Telch, clinical psychology professor and corresponding author of the study. Additional co-authors of the study include psychology associate professor Han Jolie, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and UT Austin psychology graduate student Cynthia Lancaster. These findings add to a series of published reports from the Texas Combat PTSD Risk Project, of which Telch is the principal investigator funded by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. The project aims to identify biologic, biological, psychological, environmental vulnerability factors that predict the emergence of PTSD and other psychological problems among Soldiers deployed to Iraq. So one thing that's kind of crazy about this, right, is it's 2017 when this is coming out. Um, you've got generation, generations who've been at war. And no end in sight. Um, one... There's no point in winning the war because what what happens when you win? Well, you come back to a society that hates you and wants you dead. So there's that. Um, and you attempt to go get help at the VA. Oh, it's just in your head. Well, then. And, and, and interestingly, how, how they ended this, right? So we first started at hormones and we ended at the end of emergence of PTSD and psychological problems among soldiers deployed to Iraq. Well, wait, you started with hormones and you ended with psych. So your, your, your mantra is still the same. You're still focusing on, on bullshit psychological nonsense that's made up by people observing things and uh, just throwing drugs at a problem. Well, that's not science. That's not what science is. Um, we don't just assume things and then throw drugs at a problem. We've done research and we know, even in the, the article, you know, there, there's cortisol, there's testosterone, there's pregnenolone. There's all these things that have to be evaluated. If you're not evaluating them, um, you're on the wrong, uh, wrong side. So here's the paper that they linked to, dual hormone stress reactivity, predicts downstream war zone stress evoked PTSD. We tested the regular and interactive effects of cortisol and testosterone reactivity as moderators of PTSD emergence in theater, blunted cortisol and testosterone stress reactivity at pre-deployment, prospectively predicted PTSD symptoms emergence in war zone. This hormonal reactivity profile appears to confer increased risk for PTSD by potentiating the pathology pathogenic effects of war zone stressors findings underscore the utility of assessing assessing both hpa and hpg stress reactivity and may inform early detection for at-risk soldiers the crucial role of hpa is stress-related homeostasis suggests dysregulated hpa involvement in the pathogenesis of post-traumatic stress disorder Yet, most studies examine linkages between HPA access measure PTSD have yielded no findings. One untested explanation for the inconsistency is failure to account for stimu simultaneous adrenal gonadal influence. Here we tested the singular interactive effects of cortisol and testosterone reactivity as moderators for war zone stress evoked PTSD emergence. Um... 120 soldiers scheduled for deployment to Iraq completed pre-deployment measures of cortisol and testosterone stress reactivity to CO2 inhalation challenge. Once deployed, monthly assessments of exposure to traumatic war stressors, PTSD symptoms were 
collected via web-based assessment system, cortisol hyporeactivity potentiated the pathogenic impact of war zone stressors only in soldiers for whom CO2 challenge did not elevate testosterone, suggesting that the dual hormone stress reactivity profile of blunted cortisol and testosterone may confer increased risk for PTSD emergence by potentiating the pathogenic effects of war zone stressors. Findings underscore the utility of assessing HPA and HPG reactivity when assessing PTSD vulnerability and may help inform efforts for enhanced soldier screening and inoculation to war zone stressors. I like that inoculation war zone stressors, which is like code for super soldiers. And, and uh, at some point we're going to have to go over um, like the military making super soldiers like I, we have to find these studies and like kind of tease them out because i don't think they like openly talk about hey we take these groups of navy seals and like these special boat guys and whatever and we jab them full of drugs and, like <laughs> turn them into captain america and then uh you know they go out and go do stuff or whatever which is totally I mean, we've done this for like hundreds of years so this isn't like this isn't new i mean like Vikings and Welsh warriors would definitely be uh, guzzling gallons of honey and uh, and mead and stuff like that, and you know probably whatever they would find or uh, or bone marrow and things like that in in their time as a uh, super soldier um, type of method to then increase testosterone and increase uh, um, different things in the body to help them before war. So obviously that's something that you would do. Um, the other article that they link is investigating the causes and cures of PTSD, anxiety, and phobias. Ph phobias of getting shot at? Oh, really? <laughs> Tell me more about a phobia of getting shot at. See, I had this. See, I had this phobia of not getting shot at, and so I just ran into bullets. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh, what's this guy making? I'm just going to go to the bottom of this. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, because a large uh, amount of data collected assesses of soldiers from genetic, genetic neuroimaging data are still ongoing. Hopefully these analysis will lead to additional discoveries related to identification of specific risk factors contributing to the development of PTSD and other mental disorders. Oh, mental disorders from... Uh, from, uh, from hormones, really. Dr. Touch is hoping to... Extend his PTA, uh, PTSD risk factor research to other trauma populations, such as first responders and patients presenting an emergency room following a traumatic incident. So that's what this guy's talking about. All kinds of fancy stuff. Phobias. Phobias and PTSD. I mean, like, I don't think some of these people actually, like, read what they say or, like, read what they put down. Like, I, I think they actually just, like, they put stuff down on a paper and they get paid a lot of money, but they don't actually like put two and two together. They have a plumber in the room, like a nurse prac, grug plumber from New Jersey, whose name probably starts with a G and ends with a T. And who <laughs> just like talks to them like a like a plumber or like a construction worker. Like, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? You're fucking stupid. <laughs> like, why'd you put this down? Do something different. <laughs> like, we need we need a New Jersey plumber union <laughs> for hormone replacement therapy. <laughs> I think we just send <laughs> a specific New Jersey <laughs> nurse practitioner. <laughs> RN, whatever his, uh, his thing is, um, who happens to be on a competing uh, hormone show, <laughs> and we send him <laughs> to just berate the uh, the researchers. Um, oh man, I, I think that's just what we have to do at this point because some of these people, I swear, like, um. I thought this is interesting. You know, I've been meaning to do this video for a while. Um, you know, I, I just find this all really disingenuous and like, there's billions of dollars being moved around. Uh, it, 
anyone who will tell you you go in the VA, it's a chop shop, they're just going to harm you, and you're going to come out with 15 different vials of stuff, all have contraindications against each other, and then um, you're going to end up in the ER, and then some ER doc is going to be like, why did you take this medication and this medication together? Oh, my doctor from the VA gave it to me. Like, did they not look up the chart that's contraindicated? Like, this just happens all the time. And that's just like the small stuff, let alone, you know, you've got HPA axis dysfunction, you have testosterone dysfunction, you feel like absolute shit, you end up in an ER because you're having a stroke or a adrenal um, crisis, and you go in there, and then, oh, well, it says on your chart you're a veteran, you've got psych issues, and so now you're in a padded room, and then here's lithium, and here's some more drugs, and crap like that. You know, it's, all of this is nonsense, and uh, we really have to push back on the VA, and, uh, and we need more charities to get involved to then help veterans get the care that they need, and to get away from the VA as far as they possibly can, so that they don't have to deal with this nonsense, and don't have to deal with this drama, and this isn't any better any big me- uh, medical institution. Um like I've dealt with uh, a large um, Southern Appalachian medical system um, for a university medical system, they're just as bad. They're working on the same premise. Everything is a psych problem. Here's more drugs uh, kind of solution. And none of it ever ends in anything positive and anything that anything that is done is worse than they came in. So, um, you know, we really need um, charities to stand up and start funding uh, veterans getting the treatment that they need and contractors and uh, cops and EMTs and that sort of thing and, uh, and all trauma survivors and put money where the mouth is in terms of this treatment because nothing's ever going to get better if uh, people aren't able to get the care that they need. And it's not like this stuff's expensive. I mean even five grand of treatment in the long run is cheaper than regular psych stuff and bullshit where they're going to give you a bunch of drugs and throw you in a padded room. So it's just, it's not money. It's, uh, they're using this as a tool of oppression against our veterans and against the people who need help. So that's just, that's the bottom line. As we see in the society now, we know what's up. So um, we can't really get past it. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please go on to Facebook and join the TRT Four Warriors group. As my group, we've got a couple handful of docs and medical professionals that are in there. Lots of veterans, lots of cops, lots of dirtbag contractors like myself, lots of regular people, lots of regular trauma survivors and car accident survivors and people who are just interested in the topic alone. I hope you guys have a safe week and stay tuned for the next video.